<sighs> All right, well, geez. Um, what to say about that one? Uh, it happened again. Um, but there's a lot to unpack from that one, uh, from last night. And uh, I'm going to give it give it my go to see what happened and, and give a bit of a ramble. And uh, at any point, you know, give me your, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and, uh, and, and really let me know what you think of my opinions too. So yeah, just uh, let me get into this. The first little somewhat positive from that last night was <clears throat> they mentioned it on the on the broadcast that last night was our first loss uh, over twelve points in over a year, um, which depends how you look at it. Um, we haven't had a blowout in a while, I guess, but then, you know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to your personal opinion, I guess, but, uh, you know, it was an interesting little fact. But, losing like this, with our inexperienced side, is not not acceptable. Um, we had six players uh, with 11 games or less, nine players, uh, 20 games or less. But, um, it's not acceptable because Sydney had even less experience. I don't know their numbers, but they had even less. So to to have this kind of result, I think, is just not acceptable. They had no backline. Sydney basically had no backline. So I think I think our main, well, one of our our main issues, our leaders were not uh, stepping up in the final quarter alone, but for most of the game, really. Um, the kids were great. They made mistakes, but they're going to do that. And I was really annoyed by the likes of Vlosten, Bolter, and Prestia. But I'll get into, into them a little bit later on. Uh, they just they needed to do a lot more, especially in the last quarter when we were in a position to win. They just didn't. So I'll get into more of that in a bit. The big stuff I want to talk about is our game plan and our coaching. Does anything actually change in-game when things aren't going right? Because I don't notice any sort of innovation during games. Now, I'm not pointing my finger at Dimmer. You know, he's smart. We know that. I'm sure he would know of the issues. But this game plan of just hack it forward at all costs, kick it to grass, it's not working. You look at the team, you look at Melbourne, you look at Sydney and a handful of other teams, which becomes very noticeable against us, that the way they kick through zones, nail their targets... It's how the best footy is being played. Um, they figured out how to counteract this chaos footy that won us flags. You know, great job. Great job. We got three flags. But chaos footy seems to be done. Um, and the only times I really, you know, it's on show is when both teams are applying just basically maximum pressure and there's no other option or the conditions make you. So it's a bit wet. And stuff like that. But the chaos footy I think is done. And I'm sure the coaches know that. And there's a lot, uh, you know, a lot more that can be uh, dived into that. Um, but anyway, that's sort of the reason I think, one of the reasons that we get on these rolls when we look great. And we kick goals and the handball game's working. And we're, you know, it's happened in two quarters the last two weeks against the Bulldogs. And obviously last night. And then it dies and we get torn apart quickly. So it works for a period of time. Then it breaks, completely breaks down. And I don't think the coaches any have sort of any real plan Bs and Cs to fix it. I, I don't notice much. There might be some rotations in the midfield. But other than that, you know, try something new. I want to see like, you know, Cumberland get in the middle. Throw Hugo in the middle. Just do things like the stuff that Hawthorne would be doing at the moment. This needs its own mention. How the hell does Tom Papley... How do we let him kick six bloody second half goals? Like, someone get on him. So, like, tag the bloody shit out of him. Like, do do that after he kicks three. Just have someone on him. Do Like, I didn't... Maybe they did. Maybe they tried. I didn't notice anything. He looked alone half the time. But, jeez, like, how do we let it, Tom Papley kick six second half goals? Like... Bloody hell. I should at least go through some of the best players on the night. And this is where I'm going to talk through more of the Vlosten and Preston and stuff. But um, 
I'll go through some of the best first, and then I'll go through that. So my general thoughts, Liam Baker, Jacob Papa, Tim Taranto, clearly best on for us. Um, Rioli got in some great positions, but we weren't really giving the ball to him nearly enough, in, especially the first half. He still ended up having a good night, but he got into, he was running hard, he played a great game, but we weren't giving the ball to him, which I don't know why, just handed off to him. He got in some great positions. I thought, I think he always makes, you know, he's a good kick and he makes good decisions with the ball, so just give the ball to Rioli more. Um, we've lost and impressed here. They need to do more, simple as that. They're the senior players that need to be helping out these kids, and they act like Muppets half the time. They they don't even know what they're doing, it looks like. Vlosten's an idiot. <laughs> I mean I mean that in respect. He's been great, but come on. He's a leader down back and, and Prestia doesn't is not doing much. Maybe he's got issues and he's sort of being forced to play. But oh, Bolton needs to stop his little tantrums and giving away fifties all the bloody time. See that way too much. Way too much. Demo, sit him down, maybe like send him to the VFL for a week. Like his little tantrums and 50s, I swear it can count it on both hands over the last couple of years. Ugh. Now, Bolter. Bolter made some serious errors. I'm sure we all we all saw those. He made some serious errors. Now, were they just brain fades or is there another problem? There was a moment that really stood to me where the ball was coming in. I mean, there was a few that stood out, but the ball was coming in. And he was just watch, watching it from the from the back. He didn't like they showed it on the on the post game vision, and they it's like you should be crashing that pack. I'll, I'll, I'll show some of the vision if I can find it, put it on the video. But it, those errors are just very noticeable, and like he should be crunching that pack at least trying to poke it, or you know better yet mark it. But you know he did nothing. I think he was just sort of waiting for it to go to ground. But that's that's not his job. Um, Grimes looks lost half the time um, is his time up you know I don't know how many times we can just say you know this player X and Y had a poor game it'll be good just you know give him another go or whatever like like senior players I'm, I'm talking about because we saw it we saw it um, with towards the back of his career with Shane Edwards where he just couldn't go anymore and it was getting obvious but I think we persisted with him a little bit too long. Are we doing the same thing with with some of these guys, Grimes? Like, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's, um, I think we are with Cochin. Um, I don't know how many games Cochin's going to play this year, but he probably should have probably should have retired last year. Um, you know, might get some hate for that, but I, I don't know. I think it's just time to to play like the you know Sonsi full time instead of Koch and stuff like that. But yeah. It's probably an opinion for another time. It is too early in the year, but yeah. A few more positives. Uh, Rewalt kicked four. Uh, I thought Cumberland, Young, Sonsi, and Mansell were all very solid for the most part. Um, and I feel he, like Hugo might get some flack, but in my honest opinion, I thought he did very well. He got in good positions um, that he did, and he, he gave his effort. And for someone with under 20 games right now, that's a pass. Um, just, I think he's another one that just needs to keep playing, you know, him, Sonsi, Cumberland, uh, Young as well, just need to keep playing. They need to stay on the side. Like, we're, obviously, they keep mentioning it. We're in a transition period. We are, we should all know that. Anyone who's holding on to, to 17, 19, and 20 and thinking it's just going to happen, it's not. Like, I'm going to say that really comfortably now. I don't, we're not doing much this year, um, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy it. It's a transition. We're going to see these new guys come up. I just hope the coaches see that. And as soon as like all the players are like on our injury list are back, I hope they don't just all come in and we lose and we lose Cumberland. We use, lose Sonsi. Like they need to play. Like they need to play. Like it's it's really as simple as that. Um, so enjoy the ride. I think over the next uh, year. Um, and we'll see where it goes, but, you know, I, I do enjoy watching these kids. I just hope the coaches, Dimmer and all that, are smart enough to know to, you know, just let this happen. Let this transition happen, because we're not, like, let's build to a next flag. Let's not just try and squeeze into the eight and 
and all the time. Let's not do that. Let's let's build for an X flag. That's what we should do. Um, well, yeah. Anyways, it's a bit of a longer ramble than I thought, but uh, there's my ramble. Um, next week we got the D's in Anzac Eve. Ugh, you know, yikes. Uh, I'll make another video on that. Uh, probably on Friday or Saturday because I think the game is on the Monday. Uh, yeah, so I'll make another video talking about that one. And uh, yeah, that'll be it for me f for uh, for this. Give me your thoughts down below. What you thought about the game and everything like that. And um, we'll catch you in my next one. Thanks for listening to my ramble. And uh, see you guys in the next one.